What's going on guys? This is one of the projects I've had in my head for a while. A little bit of guitar art. Popular cutouts and shapes that you can actually hang on the wall and not spend as much money for buying a whole guitar. This is a piece of wood from Kimball Hardwoods. He has the greatest selection of heavily figured maple anywhere. Great guy. And I got a couple of these pieces. First thing we're going to do today is stain a dark stain, jet black and dark brown first. We're going to go for like a, uh, I'd say a classic Gibson-ish burst, but we're going to darken it up first to get the figure to really pop. This is what we call Angel Step Quilt from the Pacific Northwest. I have played with this wood before. Sometimes the grain uh, absorbs the stain a little bit oddly. So what we want to do is get a nice dark coat down, sand it out to get the figure to enhance, and then do a little bit of red and yellow and see what we can do. I've got hundreds of videos out here. We're going to use Angelus Leather Dye. I've got the link below. You can purchase the stains directly from Angelus. This stuff is the best. I've used tons of different stains and I like this the best. So we're going to start with like a 50-50 mix. A little bit of dark brown and a little bit of black. And we're going to rub this in. I get a lot of questions sometimes. Why am I not sanding black or staining black and sanding back? It just depends on the look that I'm going for. Sometimes I don't want to stain the wood too much. Uh, that's when I don't use a color such as the black or the brown first. Sometimes when I want the wood to really enhance, I'll add the black first. This time I'm using the black and the brown because I know I get a little bit darker of a mix. Sometimes the brown is not, the dark brown is not dark enough and the black is too black. So a little bit of a mix gets me there. We outlined the shape of this on my inventable CNC. We got this mixed up. We're going to apply a nice coat here. Got an old cut up t-shirt. We poured this off to the side and I'm going to try and not get too many stains. And then the center here is just painted black. We're going to do two coats tonight. Get this to darken up. Not a hundred percent sure what the price points will be on this stuff. But if you guys want to offer, let me know. Like I said, I've got a lot of people interested in these types of stains but it's hard to always purchase a really expensive guitar. So I'm trying to do something different. Two coats of this stuff really mixes it up nicely. It gets the color to absorb evenly. If you put one coat on, it doesn't absorb. You can see how I poured the black here first and it's absorbing at a different rate. So you just got to keep rubbing it on. Now once I sand, this will all do something weird. It's weird the stain is acting goofy today. It's leaving some blotches. Normally it doesn't do that, but you can see some of the little dots. So for this first art project, we're going to do it sort of traditional. And then as I do more of these, I'll expand out into different colors. And if they don't sell, I'll have a bunch of these hanging in my house. I've got a couple more of these tops as well. This is the least figured top from the set. So that's why we're going with the black. The least figured sets, the more color you add, sort of the better results you can get. So this is the second coat, sort of. I'm not sure I need it, but I just want to make sure this is on there evenly. This was sanded to 320. 
and the die is sort of sitting on the top of the wood slightly. That means it's not being absorbed in. So a lot of times you'll see me do that steel wool trick and that's just pulling the die off that's sitting on the top of the wood. All right, so that's two coats. What we're gonna do is just gonna stain the sides here real quick. I may actually have to paint these because I've got some glue lines. We'll see. Yeah, sure. You guys wonder how far the stain is seeping into the wood and it's seeping through a full quarter inch piece. So this stuff is soaking in. What's happening in this angel step is the grain is running, it's got these like end grain running through the wood and that's what's showing through right here. That's interesting. I'll probably do a blue one of these, a green one of these, a uh, black burst. I'll do a bunch of different colors at some point. But for today, we're gonna go with, a, I guess, a traditional cherry burst, but we're darkening this up to get that figure to light up. All right. Two coats, we'll let this sit for 24 hours. I'm gonna sand it off, and then we'll do the rest of the dies. All right, so I sanded it off with 320 for about eight to 10 minutes. I thought it was still too dark, so I came back with 220, sanded for about four or five minutes, and then went back over it with 320. And that's where we got to this stage. So this first video is just at 320, but we're gonna start with yellow in the center and move the colors out. I'm gonna do the yellow first, that way it seeps in, and then if I need to come back with the darker colors, I can do that. So we've got some Angelus yellow here. We've got an old t-shirt. You can see how much stain soaked into this piece of wood. A lot of black still in this piece. So we're probably gonna have to sand once more to bring some of that out. We'll see. So I'll put two coats in the center. Specifically right here. I don't know, maybe next time I'll do the humbucker routes or the sort of the bridge outline. I don't know, I'll have to figure out how to do this. Then we're gonna go with brown and red on the outside. So this is just Angelus Brown. Got a new clean rag. And I'm doing the brown first because once I put the red in, it's really hard to get the red out. So we'll rub the brown. Coming across, I'd say this is probably muddier than I would want with the yellow right off the bat. Too much 
black. See now look at how the brown really knocks this pretty good. I learned that in the last one that brown really sits in this wood. Maybe I should have just used the dark brown. All right, so we'll get the brown coming across. A little bit too much right there. It's looking pretty good. Now we'll add the red on the outer and sort of pull the colors together a little bit more. This brown and yellow looks pretty cool. Next time we'll do a little bit less black. Now remember, once this goes in, it's in. So I'm always very cautious with red. But man, does this red look awesome on here. This is killer. Just gotta make sure I wash the red. And I think I can add a little bit more. Put it on a little bit too tight there, so we'll do this. Make sure we get it on the outside here. So we're only bringing a little bit of the red in. You guys are going to say I overdid it. I didn't because I still am going to sand once more. But I've really accentuated the grain with the black and this is looking killer. I'll hit the center with some yellow and then pull the yellow back out like so that's it guys that's the fire see how the yellow sort of turns this into fire you got that lighter center I gotta bring it down slightly when I sand. But this is awesome. It's a little bit darker than I'd like, but that black soaked in. Let's add a little bit more brown on the outside. We're gonna go to the dark brown. Some of you are probably asking why I don't use orange. I don't feel like orange gives me that same, same look. So here's the dark brown. You can see that brown is really highlighting that look. Got monsters above us, even though I'm filming. <laughs> All right, so I've got the color scheme I want. I'm gonna come back with the red and just sort of wipe some of this on. Sometimes when you're doing these, you want them lighter, but I'm pretty happy with this. But what I will do is I will sand, sand this down and get that color to pop. 
and I'll pull out a little bit more color. So that's the first application of color. I'm going to come back and hit this with 320 right around here in the center and then I'll apply one more yellow and it should really really light up but that is that's pretty sweet all right so we sanded the center with 320 for about four or five minutes and it pulled a decent amount of color out remember I always use that steel wool trick to pull off the color that's on the top we're gonna come back with a new rag in Angelus yellow and we're gonna wash all this together and it should give you more of a I'd say a traditional look turn my gloves inside out that didn't really help much But this is more or less traditional. If I sanded more, I could get um, a little bit more of that sort of red and brown out. But now I've got a really nice deep yellow in the center here. And I can sort of just wash these colors together. A lot of times I like bringing the yellow down a little bit more and having this lighter but since this is sort of the focal point, that's where we went with that methodology. So once we add the yellow, I'm just gonna look for any issues. That's sort of an issue. Needs to be washed in a little bit. So I can come down here and still manipulate the yellow a little bit. See, as I move down the piece, it picks up a lot more of that brown and red. I lost some of the coloring that wasn't looking all that great over here. That's looking sweet. Probably I would have liked to have left the center a little bit uh, lighter the black and the brown really soaked in. So a couple colors really do that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that here, but it really accentuated the figure on the outside here. So that piece didn't take it as much. Lesson learned for the next one we do. So we're gonna let this dry and then we'll hit it with some steel wool. So this first coat is very, very light. I've got Mohawk pre candleized sanding sealer, and it's just this. That's it. Let it sit. Don't do anything for about 20 minutes. So that was about 10 minutes. We're gonna do the same thing. Real light coat. That's it. Wait another, let's say 10 minutes. All right, so you can see after about another 10 minutes, it's dry. We're gonna put a third coat on. It's a little bit thicker this time. Make sure you got no dust on it. Again, that's it. Let this dry another 10 minutes. 
All right, so on that third coat, I got really good coverage. You can tell that it's got a nice seal on it. For that fourth coat, we're gonna do the same thing. A little bit thicker of a coat, and then we'll be done. That's the fourth and final coat. Again, we'll let this sit. It's definitely a lot thicker. So here it is all finished. I ended up going with a satin lacquer finish. I applied four coats similar to the previous sealer finishes, a light coat and then a heavier coat. One of the comments was that if it was too shiny, it would reflect light in a house and that wouldn't be good. Uh, the overwhelming majority of the votes on Instagram were for a satin finish. So here's a bunch of different pictures in different light. It's for sale on my website. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.